Good morning, everyone, and welcome once again to the Baptist Bread Devotional and Scripture Song Broadcast for this ninth day of May. And it is Monday, and we have flown through the first week of May already and going into the second week. And uh, it is 2022. Amen. And today's topic is titled, The Refining Process. And before we get started on all that, I'd like to greet you as always in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Amen. And he too can be your Lord and Savior today if he's not already. And if uh, he is, I uh, just want to encourage you by doing these broadcasts and uh, hope these are helping a blessing to you. And praise the Lord uh, for these uh, men that write these devotionals. Amen. Praise the Lord for that. And then Brother Dean and Sister Patty that do the scripture songs. And then these hymns by different men and women throughout the ages. Praise God. All right, so we're going to start with today's scripture song from Proverbs thirteen fifteen. So let me press play and sing along with Brother Dean and Sister Patty. Proverbs thirteen fifteen. Good, Good understanding, understanding giveth favor, but the way of transgressors is hard. Good understanding, good understanding, give it favor, give it favor, but the way of, but the way of transgressors is, transgressors is hard. Good understanding, give it favor, but the way of transgressors is Hard. That's right. So make sure we take heed to that. Amen. All right. So that was a short one today, and maybe do that a couple times during towards the end. But now it's time to get into today's Baptist bread topic for Monday, May 9th, titled "The Refining Process." Amen. All right. So today's author is A. H. And that is the initials for. C-A-H, that would be uh, Al Hughes, and he's from Mesa, Arizona. And then the passage is from 1 Peter 1, 7a, and it says that the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire. And it's good to read the whole entire passage, so let's go ahead and read that in its entirety. 1 Peter 1, go there and get the entirety of the passage so first peter 1 7 and let's see here how far should we go back all right let's see all right so let's go back to um verse actually let's just go ahead and read the whole entire entirety of uh this all the way up to seven i have to go a little bit further all right, so chapter 1, verse 1 says, Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father, through sanctification of the Spirit, unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ, grace unto you, and peace be multiplied. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Praise the Lord for that, that we're kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation. And so we can't uh, uh, keep our own salvation, but God keeps it for us. Amen. Praise God. And you can't lose your salvation. So hope you understand that, that uh, salvation is eternal. And if you uh, could lose it, it would be temporal. But God keeps it for you. Amen. By the Holy Spirit. All right. Continuing on. Wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season... If need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations, that the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory of, at the appearing of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen, ye love, 
in whom though now ye see him not, yet, yet believing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls, of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently, who prophes uh, prophesied of the grace that should come unto you, searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ which was in them did signify when it testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow. Amen. Unto whom it was revealed that not unto themselves but unto us they did minister the things which are now reported unto you by them that have preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven which things the angels desire to look into. Amen. And so, just wanted to give you a little context there, and encourage you to read the entire chapter. So, I left off with uh, uh, verse 13. All right, but now it's time to get into the topic of the refining process. And again, the uh, actual verse is from 1 Peter 1, 7a. And let's get into the topic here. All right, the author today writes, he says, Gold is mentioned nearly 500 times in the Bible God likens the perfecting of the believer as a refinement. Job said, When he hath tried me, I shall come forth as gold. Job 23.10 Gold refining includes three stages. So here's those three stages. First, the crushing stage. Once gold is found within ore, the rock must be crushed into small particles. Among these particles are the gold, but the gold must be cleansed. Of unwanted materials. Dross is what's in the parentheses. Second is the crucible uh, stage. The mineral deposits are liquefied under intense heat. The gold separates from the impure deposits. S uh, certain chemicals are added called fuller soap in Malachi 3.2. This further cleanses the gold. Dross is the extraneous uh, matter that must be removed from gold. And that says, see Proverbs 25, 4. So let's go to Proverbs 25, 4 really quick and read that. Proverbs 25, verse 4. And it says, Take away the dross from the silver, and there shall come forth a vessel for the finer. Amen. So that was the passage there. Um, so Proverbs 25, 4. It says, Gold, or excuse me, God refers to this in Isaiah 125, and I will turn my hand upon thee and purely purge away thy dross. And third is the conforming stage. Now the gold is ready to be formed into whatever shape the refiner desires. Gold can be stretched, molded, bent, or formed into most any object. For example, the candlestick in the tabernacle was made of pure gold and beaten into shape. And that uh, references ex Exodus 25, 31, and 36. All right, so again, the um, first, the three stages of gold refining includes uh, these. First, the crushing stage. Second, the crucible stage. And then third, the conforming stage. And then he concludes here, perhaps none of these stages is enjoyable for a believer to suffer through. He is crushed, melted in a crucible, and hammered into conformity, but the finished product is found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ, verse 7a of First Peter, the rest of the verse, amen. So praise God, so let's let uh, the Lord uh, uh, remold us, and amen. So praise the God, and that is the end of the topic, the refining process. So we should allow the Lord to work in us and refine us to what he wants us to be. Amen. All right, so that's the end of the Baptist bread. And now I'll go ahead and read you the Boots on the Ground devotional for May 9th. And this is from the book Boots on the Ground, Daily Devotions for the Christian Soldier, written by Randy Wells. And today's topic is titled New Lease on Life. And this takes place on May 9th, 1671, way back in the year 1600 and the passages from Ephesians 2:10 says for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works 
which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Ephesians 2.10. All right, so the topic here, new lease on life. It says here, England's crown jewels have stimulated both awe and temptation for over 600 years, known as the coronation uh, re regula. They are arguably the most visited objects in Great Britain. The 140 piece collection of crown jewels are displayed at the jewel house in the Tower of London. Having seen these myself, he says, the crown jewels are truly a sight to behold. And not as much as it's going to be a sight to behold Jesus. On 9 May 1671, an Ar Irish adventurer named Thomas Blood, commonly known as Captain Blood, for his service in the English Civil War, became one of the world's most infamous thieves, as he and his accomplices tried to steal the crown jewels. Captain Blood and his team of three, uh, of three knocked out the jewel keepers and stole the jewels. However, one keeper awoke and sound the alarm before the thieves could escape the tower with the jewels. After being imprisoned for the crime, Blood refused to speak with anyone about it except King Charles II. The king was so impressed with Blood's audacity in the meeting that he pardoned Blood, restored his estates in England, or excuse me, in Ireland, and made him a member of his court with an annual salary. Hmm. Evidently, the king saw something in Thomas that he thought he could use in the royal courts. Like blood, we are all thieves in one way or another. We steal time, we steal objects of value, and we steal blessings from others. <laughs> uh, none of us is righteous on our own, right? And yet God, in his rich mercy, not only pardons us when we receive Christ, but he allows us to serve him just as Charles did for uh, Thomas Blood, and I will cleanse them from all their iniquity, whereby they have sinned against me, and I will pardon all their iniquities, whereby they have sinned, and whereby they have transgressed against me. Jeremiah 33, 8. Praise the Lord for that. It would be, excuse me, it would have been foolish for Blood to refuse the pardon and position that the king offered him. Likewise, it would be foolish for us Christians to refuse to serve our king who pardoned us from all our sin. <laughs> yeah, so let's take heed of that. It would be pretty foolish for us Christians to refuse to serve our king, King Jesus, our Lord and Savior, who pardoned us from all our sin. So let's make sure we're doing that every day. Amen. So good message there. All right. Now... That's the end of that, and we'll go ahead and sing today's hymn. And uh, I know yesterday I said we were going to sing Jesus Loves Me, but uh, I grabbed the red hymnal and found the 90 and 9 hymn. And uh, so I figured that to try to sing this one today with the background music to try to get an idea of uh, how to sing it. So I'm going to try to do this the best I can. And this is page 173 in the red hymnal. Amen, the red hymnal and the all-American church hymnal, and it's titled the 90 and 9, and this is from Elizabeth uh, C. Cleffine and Ira D. Sankey, and I was reading a book about Ira D. Sankey, and he sang this hymn a lot, and many people memorize this hymn, so it would be good to hem memorize this hymn, amen, so here we go, I'm going to try to sing it with the background music. Four. 
shepherd made answer, this of mine has wandered away from me, and though the road be rough and steep, I go to the desert to find my sheep, I go to the desert to find my sheep, but none of the ransom ever knew how deep were the waters crossed, nor how dark was the night that the Lord passed through ere he found his sheep that was lost out in the desert. He heard its cry, sick and helpless, and ready to die, sick and helpless and ready to die. Lord, whence are those blood drops all the way that mark out the mountain's track? They were shed for one who had gone astray, ere the shepherd could bring him back. Lord, whence are thy hands so rent and torn? There appears tonight by many a thorn. There appears tonight by many a thorn. But all through the mountains, thunder rip, and up from the rocky steep, the east arose a glad cry to the gate of heaven. Rejoice, I have found my sheep and the angels at the around the throne. Rejoice, for the Lord brings back his own. Rejoice, for the Lord brings back his own. Amen. Well, that was a little challenging, but uh, I think I got the idea of how to sing it, so maybe we'll have to do that again here soon. The 90 and 9. Amen. Good hymn there. And again, that was by Elizabeth C. Uh, Cliffane and Ira D. Sankey. So and that's 173 in the red hymnal. Amen. All right. So, good hymn. And now it's time to sing some scripture songs before we wrap it up for today. And we'll do yesterday's, and then we'll do today's again. All right, so here we go. Yesterday's Isaiah, Isaiah 40, 40 31. 31. But they, they that wait, wait upon, upon the Lord shall, shall renew their strength. strength. They, they shall, shall mount up with wings as eagles. They, they shall, shall run and not be weary. And they, and they shall walk and not be faint. Amen. The day then upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. They shall mount up with wings. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. They shall mount up with wings. And wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk not faint, they shall mount up with wings. Amen. Alright, now we'll conclude with today's. Proverbs 13, 15. Good understanding giveth favor, but the way of transgressors is hard. 
Good understanding, good understanding, give it favor, give it favor, but the way of, but the way of transgressors is, transgressors is hard. Good understanding, give it favor, but the way of transgressors is hard. That's right, so let's make sure we take heed of that. Amen. All right, well, that'll be it for today's broadcast. But as always, before I go, let me give you tomorrow's scripture song and then tomorrow's uh, devotionals for the Baptist bread and then the boots on the ground devotion. So tomorrow will be the 10th, and we'll be singing at Jeremiah 29, 12 through 13. It says, Then shall ye call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you, and ye shall seek my seek me, excuse me, and ye shall seek me and find me when ye shall search for me with all your heart. And that's God Almighty speaking. Amen. So take heed to that. And that's the passage for tomorrow for the scripture song. And then tomorrow's topic for the tenth is titled Lane Assist. And the passage is from Matthew seven fourteen. Amen. And so that'll be tomorrow's Baptist bread. And then tomorrow's boots on the ground topic will be titled prepare to meet god yeah so are you prepared to meet thy god mm. so that's tomorrow's topic prepare to meet god and this takes place on may 10th 1863 and of course the passage is from amos 412 prepare to meet thy god so that'll be tomorrow's topic and then not sure what hymn i'll sing tomorrow but uh um i have to pick that out later so amen all right, and if you want to get a copy of the Scripture Songs book, and then the CDs are available on Brother Dean and Sister Patty's website at www.dailyscripturesongs.com, and they should have their latest prayer letter up there that you can read and pray for them and their uh, uh, mission work over there, and for Brother Dean's health, keep praying for him, and that the Lord will continue to use him even while he's uh, um, being uh, having struggles with his health. Amen. So pray for them over there and all missionaries around the world. And you too can be a bold witness in your own backyard by going and telling somebody about Jesus today. Lots of ways to do it. You can go out and hold a sign, hand out gospel tracts, go out and do door knocking. Amen. So praise God. And so let's not be silent. Let's go out there and tell somebody that Jesus saves. Amen. All right. And then the uh, Baptist Bread devotional booklet. This is a copy of it. They come in a box of 10 if you do a subscription now you'll be able to get the ones for june and excuse me may and june and this is the cover uh somebody watering some plants there amen and that's available to order online at www.baptistbread.com or www.timgreenministries.org and then the boots on the ground devotional book this is the cover to it and you can find that somewhere on the internet or perhaps at your local bookstore and then we have this red hymnal that I use today, the one I usually use is the big, thick uh, one. It's the Psalms and Hymns and Spiritual Songs book, but this is the one I use today, and probably be using this one here a lot uh, um, over the next few weeks here to find some different songs that uh, that I haven't uh, sung yet that I'm familiar with. And uh, somebody was suggesting that uh, even though I don't know the tune to it, it's good to just read the the stanzas and let you know the stanzas to the song. So I'll probably start doing that here too also so amen all right and that's on melody or that's this one the other one is melodypublications.com for the other one and this one you could probably find somewhere on the internet a uh, used copy of it so amen all right well that'll be it for today's broadcast so thanks for watching and may the lord richly bless you until next time bye for now